Hi everybody, welcome to Sensory Storytime. I'm Stephanie. I'm Ophelia. And we are bringing you a special Sensory Storytime this summer. Um, as you can tell, we've created our own little, what we're calling our Sensory Fort. So why don't you tell them some of the things that we have used to make this for the feeling? All we did was we used a nice um, soft sheet to sit on and then um, a little some mats underneath to make it even softer and just scraps of paper. We took two, ar excuse me, a fabric. We took two armchairs and set them apart and then just draped another sheet over it, put some nice twinkly lights behind it to make it nice and um, soft and glowy and covered the backs of the chairs with some nice fun fabric as well, just with some little straight pins to give it a little bit of different texture and colors. And we love it. We want to hang out in here all the time. We do. <laughs> it is a great place for not only hosting story time, but on lunch breaks, I like to come in here read sometimes. <laughs> um, we have cozy pillows. This is my favorite pillow. This is my dog buddy Aww. on the pillow. So he's in the fort with me. He makes me happy. We also have some different color, bright color um, pillows. Mm -hmm. It was so. very important for us to create a space specifically for sensory story time since we can't be here with you and sensory story time in person is so important to what we do and um, we love seeing our sensory families and sensory story time is for um, families that needs a special exception due to a diagnosis and maybe can't take advantage of our more traditional story times. And so we try and make accommodations for them when you're here um, in person, but because we can't do that right now, we thought we would create a special set instead just yeah. for y'all. So. so we encourage you to make your own sensory for at home so that while you're watching us present sensory story time in our fort, you can watch it at home in your fort. Um, it may even be just the place that you end up hanging out this summer. Uh, we have the fun twinkly lights. It's very cozy. Mm -hmm. So we just encourage you to create a cozy space for yourself to enjoy this um, very relaxing, peaceful sensory story time. Yes. Um, the other thing that's new about sensory story time this summer is that we are, instead of hosting just general themes like we normally do, we are hosting themes that are related to sensory challenges. So we go through each, um, a different sense each week. We're gonna start with visual. Next week we'll do proprioceptive, which is just body awareness. Then we're gonna do tactile, auditory, vestibular, who we're gonna do um, olfactory and gustatory. So these are all senses that you learn about and some even that you don't, that you haven't learned about, you haven't heard, but they're, they're sensory issues that some people might have challenges with or um, hypersensitivities to. So uh, we're gonna focus on that. We're also gonna give you some tips and tricks for you to try at home. And all of our activities and things that we do are, we encourage you to do, do those at home, whether it's with us or after um, you watch it, you can practice it at your home. Mm -hmm. Very well. And you know, now this summer, everything is virtual. Um, starting last week, we started our reading challenge, which is to read at least 20 minutes a day for 20 days. And you can keep track of your time any way you would like, but we do have a log that you can print it at home if you wanted to do that at wileytexas.gov slash library. You'll see the Summer Learning Club page and that's where you can find the log. Uh, that's just a way for you to keep track of your time. Starting June 22nd, there will be a big submit button on that page and you would submit your time electronically. Everything's online this year. Um, so we won't be accepting paper logs, we won't be handing out paper logs, but uh, we are still doing our reading club and you can still come in and get a free book every time you read that 20 minutes for 20 days. So you can actually complete three logs over the summer that way and get a free paperback book that way and three chances to win the grand prizes. What are the grand prizes? The grand prizes this year, we have a little baby shark puppet with Fine. three board books. We have a whole dog man prize set with a giant dog man doll and a cat kid um, little doll and a book on how to draw dog man. And then of course we have our um, tablet, Kindle Fire tablet. So. so it's a really exciting summer. Things are different here at the library, but we're hoping that everything can still be special and that you can enjoy everything just as you normally do. 
So without further ado, let's start today's sensory story time. Um, Ophelia and I will be with you this whole summer presenting this. So we hope that you'll get to know us. And when, if you do come into the library to check out a book, you can say hello to us. Um, so today is our first sensory story time where we're going to focus on visual sense. And visual sense, you might have heard this called the sense of sight. Um, it's, it's basically having the sense of sight, being able to use your eyes. But a visual sense also um, helps, helps you uh, with light and darkness. So if you have a visual impairment or like me, you wear glasses and without them, you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes sometimes um, you can see blurry shapes or you might can see shadows. Uh, shadows, light and darkness. And so we'll talk about some fun ways that we can incorporate those today. Yeah. And some people have a hypersensitivity to light or a hyposensitivity to light. Um, the way it doesn't always, the way it looks doesn't always translate in your brain. For example, people with dyslexia, it might be written a certain way on a page, but their brain processes it in a different way. Yeah. So there are many different kinds of visual sensory challenges. You might have an impairment or you might just, things might get scrambled as they enter your a visual cortex. They might get scrambled in your brain. And you know what? That's okay. We're going to work out some ways that we can practice um, those challenges today and, and improvements. So we're going to start out Sensory Story Time with our welcome song. Hopefully you guys remember this from um, the spring and the fall. Um, but if you don't, we start out clapping. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello no matter what the weather. Stomp, stomp everybody and say hello. Stomp everybody and say hello. Stomp everybody and say hello no matter what the weather. Wiggle everybody and say hello. Wiggle everybody and say hello. Wiggle everybody and say hello no matter what the weather. Take a seat and fold your hands. Take a seat and fold your hands. Take a seat and fold your hands. Get ready for a story. So today's books that we are going to talk about um, have a visual element to them. And the first book that we're going to read is called Spicy Hot Colors. Mm. And this one I like a lot because the illustrations just jump off the page. It's a real contrast with the dark background and the colorful illustration. So right now, see, those are all pages are all white. And then as soon as we turn the page, bam, there you go. We also learn a little bit of Spanish. Yes, we do. Red as chili sauce, drip, drop, spicy hot. Red as firecracker, snap, bang, bebop, pop. Red, rojo. That's my favorite color. Okay. Orange as the rapes, sizzling lap, sizzling lap wraps. Orange as roosters, flitter, flutter, flap. Orange, anaranjado. Mm -hmm. Yellow as gourds, spitter, spatter, seeds. Yellow as cobs of corn. Hip hop and treat. Yellow, amarillo. That is my favorite color. It's a happy color, <laughs> isn't it? Green as Mexican iguanas, slither, slide, samba. Green as cilantro and cactus, wiggle, waggle, rumba. Green, verde. You know what I like about this page is that you can see all the different colors of green there are. Mm -hmm. So there's light green, there's dark green, there's kind of a Olive green. Purple as piñatas, smack, whack, spin on the ground. Purple as hard candy, twist, drop, swivel around. Purple, morado. Blue as tin angels, zinging on a string. Blue as paper dragons, boogie, woogie, swing. Blue as azul. Notice the color of the fire that's coming out of the dragon. What color is that? Orange, that's right, and that unhandled. It pops against the blue, doesn't it? Brown as buñuelos, a crisp, crunchy sound. Brown as a guitar, pluck, pluck, getting low down. Brown, pardo. And I learned from watching um, Family Story Time, there are different words for brown, Correct. just like we have different words for brown, like brown, tan, um, 
what's another one? Um, Sierra, things like that. So there are different words or some other words for brown. Uh, cafe was another one that's very mm -hmm. popular that uh, people use often too. Uh, black as castanets, clickety, clickety, clack, clack. Black as boot heels, rat a tap, flip, black, black, negro. White as sombreros, heel, toe, hat dances. White as toy skeletons, rattle, rap, razzmatazz. White, blanco. The spicy hot color, slizzer, sizzle on a Saturday night. Bebop, bolero, bim, bam, la bomba, la cucaracha, ole. <laughs> the end. Yay. So we have a lot of books in the library that are good for visual sense and if you want to come check some out, we're only reading a few here today, but we can make some recommendations for you if that's something you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So next we're going to fly like a butterfly mm -hmm. and I hope that some of you remember this from when oh, we would do it here in Sensory Storytelling. If you do, do the movements with us. And if and not, you'll catch on really quick. You will. Okay. Like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly through the sky. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly through the sky. Stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly up so high. Stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly, stretch like a butterfly up so high. Twist like a butterfly. Twist like a butterfly. Twist like a butterfly. Twist like a butter, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Roll like a butterfly. This is my favorite part. <laughs> Roll like a butterfly. Roll like a butterfly, roll like a butter, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. That is a great song for a lot of the other sensory issues that we're going to be, or sensory input challenges that we're going to be talking about later in the summer because there's a lot of movements, a lot of coordination, so we're going to be talking about that stuff too. Um, but for visual, you can just visualize that you are a butterfly and some of the movements that a butterfly might make. So Next, we have a really cool new segment of Sensory Search Hunt, and it is called Show and Tell. So every week we're going to be showing you uh, some things that we have special here at the library and telling you about them. Some of the things you can check out here at the library and some of the things um, you might can ask us and we might can show you if we have time and, and we're available. So today we're going to talk about some things in the library. Um, these are called Seek and Find books. Uh, we also have, they're called Look and Find books too. They are an easy section of books under L-O-O -O for Look and Find. And if you want anyone to help you find them, we can do that. But these books are really good for visual sense because it helps you focus on details. So if you're someone who has a hard time focusing, um, there are challenges in here to help you kind of focus and find certain things. So for example, this is a minion. So if you like minions, um, it gives you some, it has pages full of minions and then you have to go into the page and find the list of things that it asks you to find. For example, this one says find one minion roasting 
a marshmallow, a mouse toy, one stuck minion, one minion eating popcorn, and so on. So you're gonna find all of these things and once you find them, um, you can go to the next page and there's gonna be another minion challenge. I Spy is about a very popular series of these looking finds as well as the classic Where's Waldo? We have a lot of these. Um, some new ones just came in actually. So he's still very popular and you can, um, these get very intense and very hard. So yeah. um, as you can see how dense, oh. yeah, the, the pictures in that are. Yeah. <laughs> so depending on what kind of challenge you want, but these are a great way to practice your visual sense. Yeah, there's a Star Wars one too. So we have a lot of those. If you want to come in and check those out, just ask because we're there. And that is all for show and tell. So we're going to read their second book. This book is called The Snowy Day. It is, I think, 60 years old. Um, it was, yes, it was written by uh, Ezra Jack Keats. And we like this book for visual sense because it has a lot of bold, um, bright colors. And um, they're, instead of more like drawings, they're more like shapes. They're, he, these are paintings and he, it's more like shapes that you're looking for as opposed to details than drawings. So these are fun. It's also fun to read this story in the summer because it's about a snowy day. And on a really hot day, it's fun to pretend that it might snow. Especially in Texas. <laughs> One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the win during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and went outside. The snow was piled up and a the snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, crunch, crunch. His feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like this. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And soon he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. What do you think that was? Yes, it was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking down snow, smacking a snow covered tree. Down went the snow, plop, right on top of Peter's bed. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys for a snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough though, not yet. So he made a smiling snowman and then he made some snow angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber and he climbed up a great big tall heaping mountain of snow. Then he slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and then another, and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. He thought and thought and thought about them in the tub. Before he got into bed, he looked into his pocket. He, his pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. What do you think happened to the snowball? While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had come and melted away all the snow. But when he woke up in the morning, the, his dream was gone. There was snow, there was still snow everywhere, and new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called his friend from across the hall 
and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. The end. There's some information back about how Jack Edward Keats made the line. The words are one. That's really cool. That is a classic. Yes, it is. Like that story. The end. So we are on to another section. Normally we have a craft time, um, a sensory story time, but since we can't do crafts with you, we have activities every um, sensory story time. And you, uh, often we have things that we may provide for you to do these at home, or we give you a list of ingredients of things that you can do to do these at home. And today we are doing, what's it called? Well, we're gonna do two different kinds of tags. One is a flashlight version, and one is a bubble version. Yeah. And that's gonna be our super secret word today, bubble tag, and we'll tell you why later. But first, let's start with the flashlight. First. Yes, so flashlights are a fun way, like we said before, if you have um, visual impairment and you might can uh, use flashlights to, to play kind of flashlight <laughs> tag in a dark room mm -hmm. um, with siblings or cousins or something like that, um, or parents. It's fun, as long as you it's not completely dark and you're not gonna hurt yourself and trip over furniture. Um, you have a flashlight, you can tag someone mm -hmm. with a flashlight. You don't even have to run that way. No, you don't. So you can like hide <laughs> you can hide behind other furniture and tag someone. Yeah, well. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fun way to work with your visual senses. Yeah. Another fun way is to play bubble tag. Bubble tag. Now, bubble tag sounds like you blow bubbles and you pop them with your fingers, which you could do that, that's easy. But we like to challenge ourselves and try different body parts to use to pop those bubbles. So today, while we play bubble tag, we're gonna start with elbows. Oh my goodness. Okay, are you guys ready? We're gonna try to do bubble tag with Popping these bubbles with elbows. Okay, here we go. Oh gosh, they're not coming Maybe. over to you, Steph, yet. <laughs> and I this know. helps with hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Let me move them closer to you, Steph. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh. Uh, I got and one. And you can even count how oh. many. And then you can change body parts. How about with your toes? You almost just go. Yes. <laughs> I get a bunch this there way. There you go, like that. Or, or your nose. Can you do this? You know, this also <laughs> is interesting because we haven't talked about the sense, but we will. It's called a tactile sense. And that's when we feel things through our skin. And this provides a really interesting tactile sense because if you're popping the bubbles with your elbows like I'm doing, you can feel the pop of the bubble on your skin. And you also can feel a little bit of wetness from the, the wet bubble. So you can use your fingers too. Ooh, yeah. Or your thumbs. Yeah. This is all good for um, hand-eye coordination and tracking. Good yes. ways to practice. And yes. we have a super crazy bubble machine, but you can just use regular bubbles too. Yeah. And um, that's the announcement we wanted to make. This week, if you stop by the children's desk, um, and say bubble tag. We actually have a little bottle of bubbles that you can take home with you um, while supplies last. So anytime this week, just stop by the children's desk, say bubble tag and they'll hand you some bubbles and you can play bubble tag at home. <laughs> and if you're coming to the library but you don't wanna come in and you still want bubbles, um, we'll just send an email to sensorystorytime at wileytexas.com. Let us know, hey, or dot gov, gov, and say, hey, I'm coming to the library for bubble tag, I'm gonna get my bubbles, and we will have some bubbles waiting at the drive-thru with your name on them. Yeah, but be sure to let us know, give us a heads up first so that yes. we can have them out there ready. Because if you come through the drive-thru and say, bubble tag, the They're women gonna... <laughs> are gonna say, what? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. This is the library, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, so let us know. Um, so See? that just uh, reminds me that Every week, I normally send an email out reminding you of the next sensory story time. Um, I will be sending an email out after this story time to my sensory contacts that have our PDF page on them. This is something that we are going to have every week. And basically, these are activities that you can do at home. Um, this week's sense is visual sense so all the things 
that are listed on here are things that can help with visual sense. And you'll be getting an email uh, with this in it. If you're not on our email list, but you still want this, it will be uploaded to our website. Our sensory story time page, which is under the main story time page. Mm -hmm. You can download it there, or um, we are going to list it underneath each video on Facebook. Yeah, so, it'll be in the comments too. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if you can't get a hold of one of these and you want one, again, just send an email to sensorystorytime at wileytexas.gov and we will get that to you. Yep. So we had a lot of fun today. I had a lot of fun. I'm so glad that we have this sensory story time for you guys because we really wanted to do something special for you and I, I think we found it. I think we found it with the fort. And just one quick announcement. I know we've given you a lot of information today um, and I hope you do join us because we'll be doing this every Monday at 10 a.m. for the next several weeks. But we also have a lot of great content um, coming online. We have our all of our traditional story times are, are online. All of our kids programs, our regular performers that come every year, James Wand, um, Brett Roberts, they'll all be here too. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. is when we'll be streaming content from them. Uh, we also have fun family programs, like on Mondays at two o'clock, we have different things happening that families can partake in, including a local art ramble on Thursdays, um, where you can go and we give you a different challenge and you can explore all the great local art here in Wiley. So there's lots of fun things to do this summer, even though we can't be together physically, um, we still wanna keep in touch with you and be sure that you have a great summer with the library. Me too. Um, so I was thinking, oh, the the Family Art Ramble is a really great way to utilize your visual sense because when you see public art like that, that you're going to go around the city of Wiley and see, you can see up close and see details and talk about kind of what it means to you um, because art means something different to everybody. Yep. And we have a challenge um, pretty much with every single one. And you can either um, complete the challenge and post it in the comments or or maybe you just share it with your family just to have fun. So we just want you all to have the best summer ever. <laughs> While staying safe. That's right. And healthy. That's right. So we are coming to a close. I think we've kind of given you a lot of information today and we are ready to sing our goodbye song. Mm -hmm. And this is the new goodbye song to the sensory kids, but you will pick it up so quick and it's very fun. Yes, we love it. So first you're gonna put your hand in the air, start waving, and see you later, alligator, after a while, crocodile, give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish, see you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur, Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye. That's it. We'll see you guys later. See you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.